Welcome to the High Value Sales Show of Eversprint.com. I'm Malcolm Louie, the managing member of Eversprint, and today we're speaking with Stack Vozniak, the CEO of Cargofy, a platform that reduces the time and cost of booking loads for truck drivers. Welcome to the show, Stack. Thanks for having me, Malcolm. Stack, you grew your company's revenue from $378,000 in 2014 to $2.7 million in 2017, a 613% increase, and in 2018, you hit around $4.4 million. Before we talk about how you grew your company so fast, can you briefly share what your company does beyond my quick intro and how your company differs from the competition? Uh, of course, yeah. So uh, Cargify is a mobile app for independent truck drivers. Um, through that mobile app, truckers can access uh, high paying loads and receive discounts on factoring, fuel, and insurance. So currently, we have uh, more than 7,000 registered truck drivers uh, who are using that app. And um, I, I'm originally from Ukraine, where we launched the first version of this product. Then we uh, scaled uh, our platform to India, and United States is our third market. Um, to better understand why, why we have created Cargofy, uh, we have to come back to the early days when we just started in the US. Um, we analyzed that 300% of the working population in the United States are truck drivers. And among them, huge part are owner operators, truck drivers who own single trucks. So this is more than 1.3 million of our potential customers on the $700 billion market. So, uh, Owner operators' business is a one man show because they don't own a famous brand, they use a team of employees, or uh, run their business out of a big office. So, everything they do, their entire livelihood comes down to their truck. And most of the owner operators depend on an external truck dispatchers who are able to locate loads for them. Uh, but the way external truck dispatching is currently run is the uh, uh, so inefficient. It's uh, like using a Stone Age method in a digital world. Uh, it's too expensive uh, because uh, it costs about 12% commission per load gross revenue. It's too inefficient because regular truck dispatchers can handle only five trucks per day. And it's too slow because everything is done manually through so making multiple calls to freight brokers, sending dozens of emails, and doing paperwork. And um, I clearly understood these problems during my work in traditional trucking company, uh, Vosworth in Ukraine. And based on that experience, we started Cargofy as a, a global digital solution for that problem. So Cargofy invented the radically different method uh, for the truck drivers, how to find loads better, faster, cheaper than the regular truck dispatchers. Uh, as much as email is more convenient than the old way, uh, to send letters by postman. So how it works? Um, Cargofy is integrated with freight brokers like GB Hunt, CH Robinson, TQL, uh, with private load boards and with gateway services like Post Everywhere. Uh, this allows us to get more than 50,000 loads on the platform every day. And if the driver needs an order, he places a request using our mobile app, Cargofy Partner, uh, and then our algorithm takes into account his location, preferable directions, um, minimum cost per mile, and analyzes thousands of nearby loads and chooses the most suitable for that driver automatically. And if the driver confirms the order, all of the necessary documents will be generated instantly. So right. Except low. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, except loads, we put all other services which drivers need um, on constant basis. Um, so we have instant payments, insurance, and virtual fuel card. Uh, all these services go with significant discounts from regular market prices. And we charge only 5% commission uh, from loads gross revenue, and drivers pay only if they actually accept it and deliver this load. Right. Uh, in terms of how we better than other companies. Um, I can say the trucking market is massive and many companies and platforms are trying to solve problems for owner operators. 
Yeah, so it's uh, mm, uh, very important to understand who our real competitors. Uh, I, I divided them into two tiers. So first tier is tech competitors, startups like Uber Freight, Convoy, Transix, who use technologies to invent the new way of matching trucks and loads. And tier two, non-tech competitors, traditional dispatchers and 3PL operators, companies or individuals who, who solve the same problem but in the old style way, based on uh, many phone calls and manual searching of loads and load boards. The, the most important conclusion uh, from our competitive analysis uh, is the fact that currently tech competitors control less than 5% of the market and non-tech competitors control everything else. So I think that our real competitors at this stage and in next three, five years non-tech startups like us, but the regular dispatchers with whom most drivers work now. And right. based on, on this, um, our goal is to eat part of the market from regular dispatchers, uh, or in, in other words, the old uh, way to do it. Right. Um, now, is Uber Freight doing the same thing as you, or are they doing something different? Um, they doing like uh, they trying to solve the same problem, but they focus on different customer segments. They focus on shippers, and we focus on uh, owner operators and truck drivers. Right. Okay. Um, got it. Yeah. So we we very rely on automation. So we created a self a self learning neural network that can analyze dozens of metrics like supply and demand in every state price dynamics, seasonality, weather, road conditions, uh, et cetera, and use them uh, to, to calculate market price instantly. In, in right. most cases, be better than dispatchers with years of experience. Mm, okay. Now, you said before that you have 7,000 drivers in your platform, but your potential market is 1.3 million drivers. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. The market is extremely big. Yeah, it's huge. And... Uh, and these are the drivers that do, uh, and, and each of these drivers are the one man shops for the most part, or are, there, are some of these bigger shops as well? Yeah. So uh, we focus only on owner operators. So we, we are not working with companies who have two or more trucks, uh, who have fleets, who have their own dispatchers, uh, because sales cycle is longer and, um, uh, like our product is perfect for this, uh, uh, like uh, com companies who have on on only one truck and mm -hmm. don't have brands and don't um, uh, can't receive access to loads from big shippers yep. because they have high requirements. So we yep. help to solve this gap for them. Yeah, so they see the biggest value in our technology. Now the shippers have a shipment for you to to uh, and they like your. Uh, your platform to help place it. Now it's not exclusive though, right? While they put a load available for your platform to place, they might be seeking other channels as well at the same time. Is that right? Yeah. And it's actually how it happened. So when we uh, created our website, we created a form to calculate price on, on it, mm -hmm. uh, but only few companies use it. Most of the load uh, came uh, through integration. So it can be plugin, uh, plugins to TMS systems, it can be API integration, it can be information on our email. So we collect all this information and put it into our database. And after that, drivers see it uh, almost immediately in a few seconds. Okay. And how do you know that load is still available? Uh, so we have uh, time during which load is active. It's usually it's something around 15 minutes. Oh, so, okay. Uh, and if after that we didn't find the truck driver, we uh, mark this load as uh, not not new. Okay. So then in that particular case, if a driver wants these loads that aren't newly listed, then your, your system needs to do a bit more checks to make sure that's still available. Yeah. So we also send like push notification to truck driver because um, uh, like speed of reaction is very important at this stage because many other companies also see the, these loads and if you react better you can close this deal so tr drivers interested to uh, like close loads faster and we help them to um, um, like pre-select the best loads like what is the most suitable based on price and their requirements about 
where they want to go because some drivers want to go only on east part of us some someone want to drive in midwest someone want to come back to home every week so there is many requirements which we take to account before sending notification right and then the uh you send a notification loads available that fits your criteria do you want it yes or no yeah so it's a um, uh, model in mobile app where a truck driver can uh, click confirm or close the uh, this model window and mm -hmm. say why like it's uh, like a low price or uh, any other reason why uh, he's not ready to go with, uh, with that load yep and what do you penalize truck drivers who keep on saying no to your offers and and not offer them opportunities uh, yeah we we have um claim system so if truck driver uh, break our rules we uh, add claim on his profile mm -hmm. and if if he have more than uh, he or she have more more than um three claims per uh, 12 months uh we block account and speak with his driver send some uh, materials have to work better and ha have to provide better customer service right uh, because some drivers don't do it uh, properly yep. but how about in terms of taking taking the load though right like for my understanding is for example if you are on uh, uber or lyft or something like that if you don't take enough rides <laughs> they just simply won't offer you rides anymore right because you're not you're, you're slowing down their system so do you do something similar as well uh, yeah, we don't do it, it right now, but we have plans to um, integrate more gamification processes uh, mm -hmm. because our goal is that drivers will complete 10, 12 deliveries per month. Yep. And uh, some drivers do like four deliveries. So we want to motivate them to accept more deliveries. And we're planning to lower commission with every new load. So they will be more motivated to accept more, more, more loads. Right. Um, and also maybe we will provide some bonuses when driver achieves some stage like 10 loads we will pay some bonus for that right right got it now your business grew pretty rapidly uh, four years ago 2014 you're at three hundred seventy eight thousand dollars and then by the end of 2018 you hit 4.4 .4 million right you uh more than 10x your business in four years what were the biggest drivers behind that growth um i think three um most important uh growth factors are um first one is community building so we heavily working on community building we organize yearly festival for truck drivers we uh, reward the best truck driver with uh, driver of the year award at this festival uh, we build community with more than 10,000 drivers on Facebook, Telegram, and WhatsApp. So we constantly ask the drivers, what are your current biggest problems? And based on their feedback, we improve our product. Uh, also, we target our ads on local communities. Um, for example, we have uh, ads for Russian-speaking drivers in the U.S., Spanish-speaking drivers. For every group, we have unique message which helps to convey our value to them. Uh, also, a second um, factor is search engine optimization. So uh, in, initially, at early stage, uh, we paid a um, small amount of money for Google Ads. Uh, we watched the conversion rate of every group of keywords. And if the conversion uh, was good, uh, then we invested in search engine optimization. So it allowed us to lower customer acquisition costs uh, in the longer term and don't spend a lot of money on excessive optimization of uh, keywords that do not bring us new customers. Uh, so then we clustered the keywords and created similar landing pages for every group, adapted for specific place, type of truck, or our service such as uh, like you know, straight truck delivery in San Francisco, uh, right. like semi-truck delivery in Miami, you know, construction goods delivery in Chicago. So every page have an average small uh, 10 organic visitors per month from search, but as we generated more than 100,000 of them, totally we have uh, about uh, 1 million 
visitors from organic search month. Okay. And now, before you get into that, how do you find the keywords that convert again? Um, so we, we use, um, uh, uh, it, it's a question for our marketer, but uh, I think we use uh, a Ukrainian service which help to collect this uh, keyword. Uh, they created by a company called NetPeak. So uh, this service helped us to um, uh, create uh, groups of different keywords based on uh, uh, our um, potential client requests in Google. Yep. And um, then we, we created similar templates, but with different content. And right. this content was the dynamic. So okay. we uh, spent a lot of time on that. I, I didn't lead this um, uh, part of work, but yep. uh, I know that it, it provided very uh, good results for us. Okay. And yeah. Yeah, before you, you, we uh, switch gears a little bit, because uh, I fired up my tools to check out your SEO presence. And according to my tool, which I'll say right at the very beginning, isn't always 100% accurate. Uh, it showed uh, not a real, really strong SEO presence, at least for the keywords it ranks for. It didn't see a lot of value in those keywords. Uh, and, this, and I use your website, cargofi.com, to uh, check it out. Yeah. And so maybe it, I'm checking out like, the wrong website as well. Yeah, because we, we don't do it that on our main website, uh, uh, okay. because it's too risky that Google can ban us at some stage. So. <laughs> Uh, like Cargify is more like for um, like for presenting our brand. We have okay. different websites that we generate uh, leads, and these all leads going into one system, and we handle them after that. Um, so if if you want, I I can share later with you um, uh, our uh, landing pages where we use this technology. But okay, it it works very efficiently right now. Okay, well that explains why I I, I see you know a very, very I, and a, a very low SEO presence on your site, and because you're sending it, your traffic is going to other sites that are coming through. So okay, that makes sense. All right, so uh, first driver is uh, building a community, and uh, from that you're able to uh, get ideas as to how you can help the drivers, and at the same time you can do very targeted ads and messaging for the com for the for the community's languages, for example. And then the second one was. Uh, your search search engine optimization that's working, generating a million visitors visitors per month to your sites. Uh, is there a third driver? Um, yeah, third. I think it's new region. So our our product was um, global from Thursday. So we integrated uh, multi language, uh, uh, multi currency, and uh, we uh, launched Cargofy in three different on three different continents. Uh, and uh, Europe, Asia, and North America. So um, our goal was to understand which country will perform better. And now from three countries where we work, the, the United States is most promising and biggest market. Uh, with the same efforts, we can generate much um, more revenue here. So conclusion is that um, like you, you don't need to focus on one market and don't put all all your eggs in, in one basket. Uh, so w we have plans to expand um, in five seven countries more, but when we achieve um, higher results on on U.S. market, so we we want to see United States as our an uh, anchor market where we generate enough revenue to launch new regions and expand to Nigeria to. Argentina, maybe. So we, we have some countries which we're interested in. Now, why didn't you just start with the U.S. to begin with? If you if you had asked me which country should I start first in Romania, India, or the U.S. with my product and, and share with me your idea for your product and service, I would have said, you know, go for U.S. It's a big market. It's established. Uh, the technology is already there and available. Uh, there are payment systems in place that the uh, truck drivers are familiar with already. Um, so what's your thinking behind going into Romania, India, and the U.S. at the same time as opposed to just doing U.S. only? Uh, so, uh, not, not Romania, uh, Ukraine. So Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine is my Ukraine. home country. So um, like I initially was in Ukraine and uh, far from United States. So we decided to test this product in Ukraine, as we already have 
customer database. We already have experienced team. So we launched Ukraine right now mostly uh, as our playground. So the uh, country help us to check new hypotheses, and if they work, we launch them worldwide. Yep. The India, uh, at the early stage, I hear that the U.S. is very competitive market, entry barrier is very high, and I didn't believe that uh, we will be able to uh, have any success on the U.S. market. So it's why we go to India. It's uh, as the less competitive market, and um, uh, India showed go good results, but we understood that India and Ukraine are emerging markets. They, they grow, uh, but uh, average order value is still low. So we decided to try uh, ourselves on uh, uh, U.S. market and uh, like have, have have these results which you you told earlier. So it's still like very small numbers in terms of total available market. Mm -hmm. It's uh, uh, like we have a lot of things to improve, uh, but I see huge potential in in this technology and uh, in U.S. market. Right. Our long-term goal is to um, like have at least um, 11,000 active truck drivers. Uh, why 11? Because it will be equal to $100 million uh, annual revenue. And after that, uh, we want to focus more on autonomous trucks and uh, try to find partners with who we will uh experiment on this file because i believe in like 10 20 years this market will change and if we don't want to end like nokia so we have to uh, adapt and start using self-driving trucks at some stage yep now when you said before there were 1.3 million truck drivers i was worldwide that you're referring to uh no that's only u.s in u.s okay that seems like a huge number 1.3 million yeah, trucking industry uh, in average it's um, from six to ten percent of GDP in every country. So it's yeah. very big amount of people who involved in this industry. Right now, when I mean, you talk about trucks, how big a truck are you talking about? Um, so we work in uh, uh, with uh, drivers who own cargo vans, from cargo vans to uh, 53 foot uh, big truck, okay. semi uh, trucks with trailers. Right. Okay. Yeah. When I think of it, I was thinking, when you were talking about trucks, I was thinking about the big, huge semi semi trailers, <laughs> right? So, but when you, when you also lump in the smaller ones like the cargo vans, yeah, I can totally see how there could be you know, 1.3 million owner operators yeah. of such services out there. Okay. Got it. So, uh, for the sales growth that you achieve, right? big bump, you know, you almost doubled your business again from uh, 2017, 2018. Uh, what did you do in particular to drive that growth? Uh, so r right now we, um, in terms of uh, customer acquisition, we mostly use, um, uh, in, in US, we mostly use Facebook and this uh, uh, focus on um, local community. So our customer acquisition cost is very low, it's less than dollar for per driver uh because like we use foreign foreign languages in our ads so it's um i think our big advantage uh because uh, ads on uh, english language is much more expensive uh but there are uh, united states is a country of immigrants and there is many possibilities to focus on some specific uh, groups of people who speak two or three languages um and uh, we also have uh, uh, like scalability issues. So our um, current um, uh, bottlenecks are uh, a lack of people to support operations because we can generate a lot of truck drivers, but we don't have enough people who uh, will handle some unpredicted uh, situations during delivery, like delays, detentions, and other problems. So we, we still can't automate that aspect. And uh, we still um, have problems with automation. We uh, small startup and even having uh, this like neural net for price calculation and uh, all other things, we know how to make it better. So 
our goal right now is to understand how to hire quickly a lot of people who will work remotely as contractors and also how to onboard drivers with less uh, uh, manual work. So they will fill the form, we will generate agreement, everything happens uh, totally automatically. So if we will do that, we will be able to grow much faster, like 10, 20 times per year. So right now it's our biggest um, issues uh, in, in terms of scalability on, on that stuff. So how much did the, the, the not having enough operations people hold you back? Uh, so it's like key problems right now because um, like if we will, um, right now we're building a special interface for people who have experience uh, in tracking and they will be able to use our brand yep. and uh, use our drivers and make money working from home uh, in uh, time which best for them. So it's like right. Amazon doing and uh, for example, very good example, Landstar. So they totally uh, like all this company costs more than $3 billion and um, like 99% of their operations are independent engines. Mm -hmm. So it's what we want to build too, because it's uh, very suitable for our model. Because of uh, all we are technology providers. So we want yep. to create technology which will be used by different people and create value for all of these people. Yep. Now, I, correct me if I misheard you, but I thought you mentioned that part of your bottleneck to your growth was having enough operations people to help yeah. resolve any issues that come up, right? So did that hold you back? Did you have grown, you know, did that hold you back, even though you grew fantastically in one year from 2.7 million to 4.4 million? Um, was it, could you have grown a lot more if you just had more people on board? Yeah, it's uh, like biggest slow factor at this stage. Mm. And we, all, we already have ideas how to solve that. As I told, we uh, will create a um, special program for agents because when we place a um, uh, job, uh, uh, ads on job boards, people send TVs to us, but they live in different parts of the US and we don't want to open office uh, in every state. So we want to create a system when people will be able to work remotely and we can hire like, hundreds of people every year and we will create our quality standards, like how they have to work, uh, phone uh, scripts, how they have to speak, how they have to answer on some unpredicted uh, uh, situations. And after that, uh, we will be able to grow much, much quicker. Right. Okay. Got it. Now, when you grew your business from 2.7 million to 4.4 million, uh, how much of that resulted is from getting more drivers on your platform? Like how many drivers did you have uh, in, in 2017 and how many did you have in 2018? Uh, so we uh, almost dub doubled in uh, terms of um, uh, amount of uh, registration, but right now I don't feel that drivers are a real problem. Problem is how to handle them uh, on high quality level, uh, because right now we um, onboard n not so many drivers per day because we focus on operational part. Uh, we already have enough drivers, but our utilization rate is still low. So we, uh, in average, drivers complete four loads per uh, per month, but they can do twelve. So it's our right now. Our biggest goal is how to improve this um, uh, amount of loads. The drivers will be able to be more efficient and work with us full time. Okay. So we focus so, on on that. Are they doing loads with someone else? They're doing four loads uh, with you yeah. and. Eight loads or something. Yeah. Else. Yeah, because before us, they worked with traditional dispatchers uh, and they already built uh, connections with these people. Uh, okay. Like they did like barbecue or stuff like that and uh, together. And uh, right now we have to break their habits and uh, like prove them that working with Cargo Pi is much more uh, efficient and cheaper. So, and uh, like there is also some. Other problems like gamification, uh, as we spoke before, we have to integrate um, algorithms, how drivers will be motivated to do more 
in, in our app. So I hope when we launch that, uh, we will be able to increase utilization rate. Now the ease of use and the higher uh, gross revenue or higher net revenue in their pockets, not enough for them to use cargo buy more than the traditional channels. So for, for some people uh, to break their habits is so, too difficult and adoption rate on this market is very slow. If you look on um, other companies, uh, uh, like even Uber Freight, they, they can grow with the same speed that their taxi business grew earlier because this market is uh, more slower. So we, we try trying to understand uh, psychology of drivers and why some of them work with us part time. Uh, maybe it's still like not perfect product. We have to improve a lot of things to uh, be able to handle all requests uh, of, of drivers. So we, we still working on that. We found market fit. We understood that this product is valuable for truck drivers and right now we want to achieve the maximum efficiency of operation right got it now before you mentioned that to get to 100 million annual revenue you're looking to get 11,000 drivers you're at 7,000 right now how long do you think it's going to take for you to get from 7,000 drivers to 11,000 drivers yeah but uh, there is like different metrics we have 7,000 registered truck drivers, but we need 11,000 active truck drivers who will do 10 deliveries per month. Okay. So it's uh, uh, not the same driver. Uh, based on our calculations, we need um, about three, four years to achieve that number. Uh, but take into account that we will uh, raise seed funding uh, later this year and we will be able to build stronger local team in US and launch this agent program. So if we will do all of that, we will be able to grow, uh, not, not like, uh, like now, but uh, maybe 10, 20, 30 times a year, much, much quicker. Okay, can, can you recap again? Um, you said you have 7,000 registered users now. How many of them are active? Uh, so it's hundreds. Uh, and uh, if we're speaking about U.S., because 7,000 is total registered number in Ukraine, India, and U.S. Okay. So in terms of U U.S., uh, we have uh, uh, about 800 registered trucks, and hundreds of them are active for doing like full-time job. So hundreds are active doing uh, 10 loads a day. Uh, yeah, around that. Okay. And you want to get to 11,000 active who are doing 10 loads a day. Yeah, in, in the U.S. So it's, it's our goal for that market. So is the U.S. your biggest market right now in terms of total revenue? Uh, in terms of revenue, yes. In terms of operations, uh, Ukraine is biggest. But uh, Ukraine, um, average order value in Ukraine uh, is around $200 uh, in uh, comparison with 1300 in US. So in Ukraine, we do more deliveries and we have more active drivers, but our revenue in Ukraine is lower than in US. Okay, and this is, a, this is the commission you're charging, the $500, the 5% commission. Yeah, so in, in US, it's in average uh, uh, around $75 per, per trip. Okay, so, so when you say $1,300 value, what does that refer to? Uh, it's average order value, so it's cost of delivery, which shipper or broker pay to a carrier. So okay. from that amount, we, we charge 5%. Okay, so your fee is $75 for this, on average, for this. Yeah. Okay. So to get to, uh, to get to your, the revenue you did last year, which you shared with me, 4.4 million. That's a lot of orders, right? Uh, yeah, so that's, um, um, right now we're doing a lot of uh, like sign up bonuses. And um, so our actual profit, uh, we are profitable at this stage, but we uh, like reinvest everything in growth. So our actual profit is not so high as we want. So right now it's 4.2% uh, of uh, GMV. 
So uh, it's our actual uh, like uh, gross uh, net profit. Right. So good. No, I'm just going to try to get a, get an idea of the of the scale of your business. I mean, uh, if if say for example you're getting seventy five dollars per commission per uh, order, I know that's a bit high because that's the U.S. number, but you're looking at doing uh, one hundred sixty orders on average every single day of the year. Um. Yeah, but uh, you have to take take to account that this four point four million is our GMV, so it's cost of all deliveries. It's not ah, okay. our clear commission. Oh, I so see. If, uh, yeah, so to calculate the amount of loads, we have to divide it by um, average order value. So it will be something like uh, thirty five hundred uh, uh, loads per year. Right. Okay. Got it. All right. So four point four million is the cost of the total delivery, and it's like the all in cost, yeah. right? And then then your and then your commission is your commission is uh, essentially your profit, your gross profit yeah. is driven off that. Okay. Yeah, it's for, uh, r r we charge 5%, but as we have many new drivers who come in, we provide for them sign up bonus to try our app. Yep. So they don't pay some uh, short period of time anything for us. So yep. it's why we have right now 4.2% uh, average uh, fee uh, per year. Right. But we we also like working on improving that number by providing additional services and receiving cash back from them, like right. instant payments, fuel, and insurance. So right. Uh, with all, all of that services, we will be able to charge uh, maybe around fifteen percent. Uh, but uh, drivers will pay only five. Ten percent will come from lead generation for these other services. Right. Got it. Now, uh, what do you see will be unfolding? You said things are going to be changing in the next 10 to 20 years. Uh, the driverless trucks is one. Uh, what other things do you see will be changing in your industry that you need to adjust for? Uh, so I, I think the biggest, like most fundamental change, it will be uh, like people start using autonomous trucks. So Depends on that, all processes will change, and uh, it will be less people in um, in that operation. So, um, there, I feel that there will be few big companies, um, like right now manufacturers of smartphones. So it will be uh, few big companies who operate self-driving trucks, and companies will be uh, able to lease these trucks from these operators. Uh, so it's still hard to predict because to replace all existing trucks on the earth, uh, people need something like 25, 30 years. So it's still very long-term um, process. Um, but I, I feel that um, like not only trucking, but many other industries will uh, be uh, transformed dramatically after uh, more wider use of AI and autonomous trucks, autonomous cars. Uh, so we trying to keep our hands on tools to don't miss the time when we really can start using these technologies in our business. Uh, but right now we like totally focus on current problems and trying to solve current um, issues of truck drivers and make money on that. Right. Are there other markets you think that your technology can be applied in? Uh, yeah, so we uh, analyzed briefly Nigeria. Uh, no, I mean, not, like not, not than... countries, but I mean, uh, industries, right? Could, uh, you, could you be, could you go into motorcycle delivery? Could you go into couriers? Uh, can you go into marine, <laughs> marine logistics maybe? Yeah. <laughs> Throwing some ideas uh, out so there. Uh, we constantly received uh, requests from uh, uh, different companies. One of them was uh, in construction industry, uh, yeah, and um, they uh, wanted to adapt our product to dump trucks. But um, I think at this stage we have a lot of work in our direction, mm -hmm. and only like very small amount of owner operators use our app in terms of total available market. So we don't want to lose focus and we'll work on that model without launching additional uh, verticals. 
at right. least now, maybe at, at later stage when we will have more resources, more people, and uh, we will see reason to go to additional vertical. Mm-hmm. We will do that, but in next few years, we don't have plans like that. We want yeah. to grow in our vertical. Yeah, your market's huge. Now, is your app available on like the iTunes store? Like, I, Can I grab it now if I wanted to? Uh, yeah, so uh, you can download, but we have uh, two versions, one for Android and one for Apple phones. Uh-huh. Uh, so Apple, Apple version is um, um, less developed because uh, in Ukraine and India, 99% of drivers use uh, Android phones. Yep. And the U.S. is the first country when we face that uh, significant part of drivers use Apple. Yep. So we uh, started developing an uh, iOS version of app. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, you, you, you can download it and we update it uh, every two weeks. So soon it will be, it will have much more functionality. It still don't have um, uh, inside the fuel cards. Uh, insurance, uh, additional services, which we have in Android version. Right. And uh, for a driver to start using your app right away, can they can they do it, sign up entirely via the app and just snap a photo of the driver's license and other licensees and be ready to go? Or is there a lot more involved in that? Uh, yeah. So there is two ways. One is to go on our website, sign up, and go through onboarding in the web browser. And another way is download the app and uh, sign up in the app. So after that, we will send email with uh, additional instructions what to do next. And we still speak with every driver to be sure that we have fit uh, with our uh, like culture, with our uh, uh, like understanding of uh, quality of services which these drivers provide. Uh, but in future, we want to create totally uh, like autonomous uh, process when truck drivers will sign up and they're ready to accept loads, uh, even without uh, speaking with us and going through deep uh, verification. But at, at this stage, we're learning how to do that. Yeah. How long does it take for a driver to get on board and then get their first load? Usually it's hours uh, oh, after okay. submitting a full application, like with uh, information about driver, about truck, about company. Uh, uh, information about their MC number, uh, if they have everything, uh, 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 like if they fulfill all our requirements, we, we are ready to confirm account in, in hours. Cool. So, and any documents that you need, they can just snap a photo and send it to you as easy as that? Yeah, yeah. So, we actually need only a few documents. It's uh, insurance and uh, copy of ID to... Uh, like identify this person. Uh huh. Very cool. That sounds pretty easy. Yeah, especially like average age of drivers, it's um, uh, something around 50 years. So we trying to simplify app as much as possible that all drivers will be able to use it uh, without any struggles. Yeah, it's it's still amazing still how some. Uh, app designers or companies just don't get it you know it's like they make it so hard like you sign up for something and then they, they send you a, a, a sms with a 10 digit code to verify and then you have to remember you somehow remember those 10 digit numbers that, to type in to verify that you are who you are it's like make it you know why do i need to type in 10 digits make it easy uh, yeah, I agree. But in the la- last version of uh, Android and uh, Apple, they automatically insert this code. So it, it will be easier for owners of the new models of phones, uh, for yeah. latest version of uh, iOS and uh, Android operational system. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Cause, but it's just crazy, though. I mean, some people, they don't put thought into it. Uh, it's like, why do I need to uh, remember a, you know, a real long string of numbers, right? Why not just give me a five digit number, you know, just simple things like that. Yeah, I, I agree. So we, uh, one of our um, like biggest concerns is good UE. So we're trying to, we spend more time than we want and sometimes have delay with launching new version, uh, versions, but we very focused on um, design and simplicity of apps. Right. So I hope uh, um, like it's, it's never be perfect, but it's always based to improve. Yep, definitely. Uh, three final questions for you. Uh, if Cargo Fi were to have a billboard somewhere, 
for your truck drivers perhaps to see. What would be the message on that billboard? And most truck drivers are they're zipping around at 70 miles per hour, so you only have about six seconds to share your message. Uh, okay, so maybe I, I would actually test a few different messages. Uh, something like, you drive the truck, we do the rest, and maybe the dispatcher in your pocket, and see which provide better conversion rate for, for truck drivers. Okay. I like the first one. You drive, we do the rest. Yeah. Or get loads in one tap in your smartphone. <laughs> to get one. <laughs> yeah. So we, we always like experiment because uh, we, all people can be wrong. So we have to test different versions to understand what, what works better. It's a constant process. Yeah. Makes sense to do that. And my two last questions for you. Um, who are your ideal customers and what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Uh, okay, so um, our typical customer um, is a man. So it's like more than 90% uh, of our customers is a man. So low uh, uh, freedom because they are independent owner operators. They are from 25 to 60 years old. Uh, they own his own truck and has operating authority. And they earned from seventy to one hundred eighty thousand per year, uh, and they has a smartphone. So if person fit into these parameters, uh, so more likely this person can be happy with our service. And um, uh, usually, driver accepts an average ten loads per month, and pay to us uh, only seven hundred dollars fee for for all these loads. So if uh, if there is drivers who listen to us and they tired of dispatchers who want to receive uh, profitable loads uh, much quicker with one tap on uh, a smartphone, uh, so there it's easy to sign up. Uh, you can visit uh, cargofi.com or uh, download our app directly from Google Play or App Store. And how about on the load side? Um, you know, I didn't get into this too much, but um, who are the, your ideal load providers and how can they get in touch with you to, to get onto your platform? Uh, so at, at this stage, we don't work with small and medium businesses. We work only with huge um, uh, enterprises. So uh, that's companies who need backup for their delivery. So they, uh, for example, they have urgent delivery and they don't have uh, time to find carrier. So they can integrate with us, they can send this data, and uh, their, uh, all their loads will be uh, in our systems, and drivers can see and accept them. Okay. So companies who, who have more than 100 loads per week, uh, they are welcome to connect with us, and we can integrate them quickly. And all our drivers will have access to their loads. Okay, now, now when, for companies that do more than 100 loads per week, how, how, typically how big are these companies? Uh, so it can be big freight brokers. It can be aggregators. So uh, there is also some companies who aggregate loads from um, small and medium business and provide access to this load. So we also work with companies like that. But we don't have enough time to work with companies who have only a few loads per week. Uh, because it's very time consuming. So at this stage, we focus on big players to connect all of them. And after that, we will go uh, to smaller companies. Okay, makes sense. So like, would it make sense? Like, you know, say I was a wholesale flower business. I, I distribute flowers to uh, the florists within the area. Like, could I, could, does it make sense for them to use your service if their delivery trucks for whatever reason can't handle the load? Um, or that's so too small for you. Pot pot yeah, potentially yes, but we are not focused on that segment. So we are not limit these local deliveries, but uh, we are focused on uh, long trips. Long trips. So okay. like deliveries from 300 miles, uh, it's perfect for us because we, or, uh, order value is higher, and we have time to plan next trip. So there is um, like our focus on this. Uh, right. Uh, your system set up for that. Yeah. Right. All right. Got it. Stack, it's been awesome having you on my show today. I really enjoyed hearing how you grew your company so fast. 
Uh, thanks for you, Malcolm. It was, it was nice to speak with you too. We've been speaking with Stack Vozniak, the CEO of Cargofy, about his company's rapid growth. For interviews with other fast-growing, high-value sales companies, or to learn how we can accelerate your firm's high-value sales through automation, visit Eversprint.com.